So this week in our devotionals, we're talking about everybody's favorite subject in church. We're talking about money. And so yesterday, Katrina and I talked about giving first. Today, I want to talk to you about saving second. And then tomorrow, we'll talk about living on the rest, which is contentment. So you take everything that the Bible says and you squish it together. Uh, that's how the Bible teaches us to manage our money. We're to give first. We're to save second. And we're to live on the rest. Giving first honors God. Saving second builds wealth. Living on the rest teaches contentment. So today we're talking about saving and in that building wealth. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, didn't Jesus teach that, that money is the root of all kinds of evil and that wealth is wrong? No, Jesus didn't teach that. Uh, specifically, uh, the verse in the, in the Bible that talks about uh, money and the root of all kinds of evil, here's specifically what it says. It says the love of money is the root of all kinds of, of evil. Uh, when Jesus talked about the rich and the poor, uh, the issue wasn't wealth. The wealth is not wrong. Jesus's issue is, is the worship of, of wealth, which begs the question, well, how do you know if you're worshiping wealth? Well, are you managing your money? Am I managing my money the way that God tells us to do that? Am I giving first, saving second, living on the rest? Am I trusting God with my money? Or do I trust my money more than I trust God? So I'm not going to give first, right? That kind of thing. If you give first and you save second and you live on the rest, two things will be happening. One, you'll be worshiping God with your money because you're giving first. Honoring God and through the local church through, through, through your giving. Second thing, if you save, you will build wealth. Especially in America. That's not a mystery, that's just math. If you save money over time, that amount of money is going to grow. Make sense? So giving first honors God, saving second builds wealth, living in the rest teaches, teaches contentment. The Bible teaches that wise people save money and foolish people devour all that they have. Let me give you one verse today. So Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20. It says, the wise man saves for the future. This is from the Living Bible, and I'm using this transla translation because it's just crystal clear. The wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends everything he gets. So, so here's what we just read. The Bible teaches that how we treat money reveals whether or not we're wise or foolish. If we save, we're wise. If we spend everything we get, we, we're, we're foolish. I don't know about you, but I, I want to be I want to be wise. Uh, let me give this to you quickly. So three views in the world when it comes to money. Uh, two of them are wrong and one of them is right. So there is poverty theology. Poverty theology says that wealth is wrong. Um, this is not what the Bible teaches. I, I, I just talked about it. But poverty theology says that if you're poor, you're righteous. And if you're rich, you're, you're wicked. Uh, the problem with that is there are righteous, rich people all through the scriptures. Uh, Abraham in the uh, Old Testament was was rich. I'll, I'll give you one New Testament guy, Joseph of Arimathea. That's um, the tomb that, by the way, he just loaned to Jesus because Jesus didn't need a permanent tomb. He was only going to be there three days. We're going to talk about it in a few weeks as we celebrate Easter. But Joseph of Arimathea was a righteous, rich person. Abraham was a righteous, rich person. Uh, they're all through the scriptures. The issue is not rich or poor. The issue is what we do in our lives and the decisions we make. You, you can be the wicked poor and you can be the wicked rich. You can be the righteous poor or the, or the righteous rich. Money's, money's just, just, just neutral. So that's poverty theology. Another thought that's wrong is prosperity theology. Prosperity theology says that we give to get. That's the preachers on TV, you know. Uh, if you send in a hundred dollars, God will give you a thousand, all right? That's, that's prosperity theology. I don't know why I did that accent, but that's what came uh, to mind. Uh, that's not true either. In fact, um, that's worshiping money because you're, you're trying to use God to get what? More, more money, which is actually not about God at all. It's, it's about money and us trying to, to leverage God to give us more money, right? So poverty theology, wrong. Prosperity theology, wrong. So what, what does the Bible, Bible teach? Uh, the Bible teaches what I'm going to call generosity theology or, or being a good steward, a steward is a manager. Uh, here's what that means. God owns it all, okay? And so because God owns it all, we're just managing what he's loaned to us for a time. And so what do we do? Well, we do what the owner says. And what does the owner say? The owner says, give first, that honors me. The owner says, save second, that helps you prepare for the future and, 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 and build some, some wealth. And the owner says, live on the rest. That teaches contentment. If you've never done this before, let me kind of give you a path to aim towards. 
You want to get to where you're giving 10% to God and into the local church. The Bible word for that is tithe. Tithe literally means 10%. So 10% off the top, you give first. And then I would get to a place uh, where you begin to save 10%. So you're going to give 10% to God, you're going to give 10% to yourself, and, 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 you're going to, and you're going to save that over time. That's that's going to build some money. Now, it could be you put that in a savings account. It could be that you invest that in a retirement account, those kinds of things. So you give first, you save second, and you live on 80%. Give 10%, save 10%, live on 80%. That teaches contentment. Um, and just so you know, Telling yourself no is not the American way, right? The American way is, man, you got plastic in your back pocket. We call it a credit card. You can go get whatever you want when you want it. That's foolish. You want to practice contentment. You want to tell yourself no. You want to give first, save second, live on the rest. Giving first honors God, saving second helps you. It builds wealth. The Bible teaches this. I just read a verse. Give first, save second, live on the rest. That's God's plan. Honor God build wealth for the future, and be content with what God's given you. Let me take a moment and pray for you. Father, give us wisdom of, of these things. Uh, for some of us, this is really not popular at all uh, because it pushes on real faith and whether or not we're practicing real faith beyond mental assent, but literally putting skin in the game of what we believe. So teach us, we pray. May we trust you. And may we begin to experience really the blessing and the freedom that comes from giving first, saving second and living on the rest. May we trust you. Teach us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.